Welcome to another teardown. Today we're looking inside the Relief Band, a motion sickness wearable. Keep watching to see me try it out, take it apart, and analyze the design and manufacturing of the circuitry inside. I'm Becky, and I love to make things, but I also love to take things apart because it can help me understand how things are made. The Relief Band works by stimulating the nerve in your wrist that has been found to relieve motion sickness. You may have heard of or seen the compression style wristbands before, but this takes it up a notch by using electricity to stimulate the nerve using two electrodes that you're supposed to place on the inside of your wrist. You're supposed to turn it up until you can feel the buzz through your first fingers. The single button on the device increases the power level when pressed or turns the device off if you hold it down. This 50 hours version is great for keeping in the car in case I forget to take my Dramamine. I find the electrical stimulation a little annoying, so I don't think I would want to rely on it for the whole car ride or whatever else is making me motion sick, but it definitely works and is great for the 20 minutes it takes for the Dramamine to kick in. Because if you get motion sick, you know that once you're queasy, there's not really anything that can make that feeling go away unless you stop moving. So because it's so useful to me, the Relief Band joins the club of devices I've taken apart that I like so much that I bought another one for my personal use. And this isn't sponsored by them, but they sell some of their models on Amazon, so if you use my affiliate link from the description, I'll get a portion of the sale at no additional cost to you. This video is sponsored by DigiKey, which carries tools for your own teardowns, as well as some of the components in the Relief Band circuitry. Head to the link in the description for more info on all the parts we could identify. Let me know what I should tear down next in the comments. To take this gadget apart, I use the leverage to pop the two halves of the enclosure apart. As suspected, it is possible to replace the coin cell batteries inside when they die, then snap the enclosure back together. But I get it, they wanted to offer a more affordable SKU than their rechargeable models, some of which also have a screen. Now it's time to take a look at the electronics inside with my channel's favorite electrical engineer, David Craner. Hey, David. Hey, Becky. How's it going? Ooh. Does the window get smaller? You didn't open it enough. I was just enjoying some coffee from this DigiKey travel mug outside and I heard that you got a zappy wristband. Come and take a look. So this, David, is the relief band. Uh-huh. 50 hour model. As a chronic motion sickness sufferer myself, I bought two. <laughs> <laughs> Do they work better if you double up? Um, that's an interesting idea. I haven't had both of them functional at the same time since mm. I took one apart quite quickly. Yeah. But uh, I don't see why not, because you, you can use it on either wrist. The idea is that it zaps the inside of your wrist and it stimulates that same nerve that's supposed to help with uh, the part of your motion brain sickness. that is the motion sickness. and mm. and it. It works like better than just like holding your wrist. Yeah. Not as well as Dramamine. Right. And it um, it's like zapping you the whole time you're wearing it. So it's like you can't just like forget it's yeah. on. <laughs> exchange exchange one kind of uncomfortable for another kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. It has this gel. Mm hmm. That's and cool. so my questions were because this is the 50 hour model. I think it's supposed to be like. Not one time use, but maybe like one vacation's use. 50 hours of use, yeah. 50 hours of use. Um, was it like, can the battery be replaced? What kind right. of batteries inside? And, um, and like, what components does it take to do something like this, which I presume is high voltage? Yeah. Feels, it feels like high voltage. Right. Would you like to experience it? Okay. For yourself, put it on the inside of your wrist. Mmm, chill. Turn on two. Now that's three. No. Can you feel it? No. Oh yeah, it's kind of a little tingly. Yeah. Yeah. That's if you had to guess good. based on the feeling, what's the what's the wave look like? <laughs> yeah. No idea. <laughs> so it's not as crazy as the Pavlock, which we've taken uh -huh. apart before. And if I long press, I mean, it'll that turn Pavlock's off. supposed to hurt. Yes, this one is not supposed to hurt. It's, you're supposed to just dial it up until you can feel it. Right. And then it's doing its job of basically distracting your brain. So here's the circuit board. Here it is. We got that epoxy blob. My favorite. My favorite component is always epoxy the epoxy blob. blob. That's where the microcontroller lives. 
here's like a little inductor, but then what's this? That's whatever is making the zappy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that says one... 1.65. Millihenries? Yeah, so it's an mil inductor. Mil Millihenries, yeah. Because micro would be the mu. So. And, and H is... And Henry's is the unit for inductance. Correct. Named after? Uh, Mr. Henry. Perhaps doctor? Dr. Henry. So this is like a one giant inductor. Mm-hmm. And then these are the contacts that connect to the the zappy the, the plates. Leads, the plates, yeah. The zappy plates. And they've got is this is this thing on? I don't think it's oh maybe it is it's on. Blinking, yes, it is it is on. Menacingly. It is on. That's the the it's on the first level. So yeah. if I hold it down, it'll turn off. It doesn't beep. Can I put anything. the multimeter on it? Do you want to? Yeah. Let's just see. Maybe is it on again? It's not on yet. You want me to turn it? Yeah. Now it's on. Let's just see what it does. I should measure between the two pads, right? Yeah. I should be measuring. Am I measuring the right thing? I think it would be... Like one of these and one of these. Yeah. Right? Okay, that's max. That's five. It says point two. Point two what? It says point two, but it's on the 200 volt setting. It's on the 200 alternating current setting. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I was just guessing it's alternating current, but. But it might not be. And also, also this, but you see that now, now I'm on the DC setting. And, and it's, it's actually, alternating. It's, it's going back oh, and okay. Forth. So it is alternating current. I see. Um, but it is. It could be too fast for the multimeter, couldn't it? It could be. I think we should put the scope on it. Okay. Let's finish identifying okay. the components yeah. on the board. Cool. And we'll turn our little friend off here. Um, so these are those LEDs that live under the... Under the lights. Yeah, under the lights. The, the rechargeable versions are like a lot classier looking with like a little display and stuff. This yeah. is like pretty rudimentary, just some LEDs pointing straight up. And then our taped down little... Snap gnome. Well, it's fun because it's like a button that you can... It's just made out of a piece of sheet metal and you can just solder it straight on and yeah. have it assembled in a pick and place and now you have a button. It's awesome. Okay, so epoxy here's the battery. Bomb. Yeah, here's the battery. It comes out and is obviously just two um, coin cells. It's kind of lame that they don't re market this as a replaceable battery thing and want you to throw so many batteries, throw so much electronics away. Well, they make like a, a couple different tiers of device, and I get yeah. where they're going with the cost, uh -huh. the cost savings. Like this, this is the cheapest version, and so if you're if you really want to try the device and you're really plagued by motion sickness, then this is a good option to try it and see if it works for you before you like get the rechargeable version. That's true. And it, while it says it's not rechargeable, I didn't actually damage the enclosure to take yeah. it apart. So, so now hopefully you all know that you can actually change sure, the battery it's on this one. It's a pretty standard one. battery, right? It's a very it's standard CR. battery. It's two of them. Yeah, it's two of these uh, CR2016 CR. or 20, 20, or 2024. 25. One CR 2016 and one CR 2025. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay. And there's this like washer it's, thing between them? Yeah, and there's a spacer between them. So I do think you could have two CR 2025s. I think that's what's like supposed to be happening here. 2016. That's really interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's a sketch, isn't it? Yeah, there were meetings about this for sure. And then there's this little plastic bit that uh -huh. holds it all, swishes it all into here. So. Huh. Okay. I mean, it's, it looks pretty simple. I mean, it's got a, it's got some kind of microcontroller. It's got the thing that makes the zappy, and then it's got a button and some LEDs. I mean, there's not that much. Yep. What is? What is this thing? Well, that's just a, that's just a. A broken capacitor. It's just a broken capacitor, yeah. Or an, a, a capacitor there. with some. Oh, it just has some like glue on it or something. Yeah, it's not yeah, broken. Yeah. It just has some glue on it. And then this inductor could also be part of a. A booster buck regulator to, to regulate the. Um, I may have broken that. From the batteries. I may have broken that just a little bit. <laughs> just the plastic part. It's okay. So yeah. So probably what this circuit has it. So this is going to be like a six volt. So these are two three volt batteries mm -hmm. in parallel. Yeah. Or sorry, in series. In series, yeah. So it's so a six, it'll be a six volt, circuit. volt circuit. So then it probably has something to switch that six volts down to like a regulated three point three or five volt rail, mm -hmm. and then whatever it is to spin all that up into the whatever the zappy whatever the zappy is okay so you think it's safe in, to plug it into my oscilloscope i think it's safe enough 
My brand new let's, oscilloscope? Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's give it a try. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in, turn this on. So since this is new, we want to calibrate the probes. So oscilloscopes have have an automatic output for probe compensation. Mm -hmm. So you can put the ground lead on that, and then you can put the other lead on that, and we should see a square wave. Then what you do, tune it up, trigger. You see something that says trigger? Oh, here. Mm -hmm. Oh, the probe looks pretty, pretty square. Looks pretty okay. So, if it was not square, like these look pretty good so far, but if it was not good looking, they come with these little plastic screwdrivers because it's such high frequency that putting metal on it could mess the signal up. Mm -hmm. and there's going to be like a, there should be like a little, oh here, in the, there's a little screw hole that, that adjusts a capacitor. Oh. So see if I twist that. Yeah. Fancy. Auto whack it changes. Yeah, and you want to make it as square as possible. Yeah, so you want to make yeah. it square. You and need then, to do that to this one too? Yeah, let's do it to that one. Okay, so I'm going to take us back to channel one. Which is yellow. Which is yellow. Can I put it on here yet? This thing isn't on or anything. I'll just take this away actually. So now we just like poke around at it and see. Can we put the probes onto two different places? Well, we could, but places? I think it's only one signal. Okay, so, you, so wait, you have to put this put, somewhere? So one side, yeah, so it has to measure against. So put the ground right? there? Yeah, like sure. That? So try that. Wee. Ooh. Okay, so we'll go back to trigger mode. I'll take us back to. Triggering from channel one. Look at that. Zappy zappy. Zappy zappy. And we can compress the time base. I can see it moving in, like increasing in strength and decreasing in strength in the same pattern that it feels like it does. Like it pulses yeah, in and pulses, it pulses out. It pulses in and pulses out. So we can see. Oh, wow, look at those. Those are real big. That's high voltage for you. Yeah. Zap, zap, zap. Okay, so see, as I'm changing this here, mm -hmm. it's changing the count of volts. So, so the, the y-axis is voltage, and mm -hmm. then the x-axis is time. Mm -hmm. So if you mess with these knobs, it changes what each of these graduations is, and you'll see it change up there. So it's 500, 5 volts per div at this setting. Mm -hmm. and so if we turn it down... You can see that it's like... You can see, so this is like 10 volts per div. So you can see it's kind of like, I don't know, what would you call that? I mean, it's, it's going jumping, between it's like 20 and 40 volts. Place. Yeah, it's like 20 and 40 volts. So when you feel it, does it feel like it's about, it's going about half as fast as when you get zapped from an electrical cord in the wall? That's what... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't zapped myself with an electrical cord yeah, in a wall, in a from while, a wall yeah. in a while. But yeah, you're asking me if it feels 30 yeah, hertz yeah. versus 60 hertz? Sure, yeah. Sure, yeah, sure, why not? Um, like I can feel the granular zaps. Yeah, so so that's how fast the zaps are happening. Mm -hmm. And if you actually want to okay. like, if you actually want to like look look at a zap. The shape of the zap. And this could be several zaps like layered on top of each other, but. That's so cool. Yeah. Do you want me to I turn mean, it up, or is that dangerous for the oscilloscope? Uh, well, the oscilloscope says it can take up to 150 volts, so it's probably okay. It can probably go up to at least up. the yeah, next the up. next uh, setting. It's the same shape, but bigger. Interesting. And the initial one. Ooh. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's yeah. probably like charging up some kind of resonator and then letting it go and ring down, and you can see it like ringing down. Yeah. And you can feel it also. Cool. Neat. And, you know, you can move these back and yeah, forth of using course. this. And Okay, well, uh, that's all very exciting. Do you want to move on to the scan? Let's look at the scan. Here is the scan. Uh-huh. We've got the parts that touch your skin yeah, right there. Pads. Here's the pads for that giant inductor. These metal bits on the outside are actually the watch band attachments. Just shaped pieces of metal. 
And here's your two batteries with your little washer in between little, them. This little spacer. It's pretty sketch. <laughs> yeah, I, I really bet that it's like a cost saving thing. Yeah, for sure. Here's your little dome. Because those batteries are the same voltage, they just pick the one of them has a smaller capacity. Yep. And it's thinner than the other one, so they just had to put a piece of metal. <laughs> so if you do replace the batteries, you should be able to use two of those thicker ones and without the washer, and it'll actually last longer than 50 hours. <laughs> yeah, if you can make it fit in there. This um, is metal only. Here's and then here's our slices. I mean, it looks pretty straightforward. You got a battery, you got power conditioning, and you got a thing that makes the zaps and a button and some LEDs. It's pretty simple. I mean, I'm sure the magic is in is in whatever firmware they're using to like generate. I'm sure there's some reasoning behind like what frequency do the zaps come at? Like what voltage? Like what's the waveform shape? So I mean, that's all in software, right? Yeah, I I don't know. I I would be. Curious to see how much, uh, I mean, you can see that it's like a 2007 medical copyright, mm -hmm. NeuroWave medical copyright Neuro 2007. Medical. So um, it's obviously science that's been around for a while. And I, I have been marketed as a, as a chronic motion sickness sufferer, the wristbands that just press on the nerve. Right. So that's all, that also does something. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it's, so I don't actually know how scientific the zaps have to be right. i think it just has to stimulate the nerve right and so i wonder if there's a a reasoning behind the firmware to make it like more tolerable to wear so that it's yeah. not just like because it does like breathe in and breathe out yeah uh sort of well, at it's the nice feeling. that it's uh you know software controllable so like they can they can make one device and then test to see what's comfortable what works better what's less comfortable what doesn't work as good and then use the same hardware but change the programming inside of it without having to... There's, uh, our, there's, there's our, our chip. That's inside the epoxy block. Yes, right? it is. If you zoom in, can you see the wire bonds? Maybe. Not really. Here's like the, like I, the way I describe it to my students yeah, like is candy. that it's like a birthday cake where mm -hmm. the frosting is the positive side and the part that touches the plate is right. the negative side. Yeah. And so you can see that here where you can see the cake frosting uh -huh. is the positive side and then the negative side and they don't touch. Yeah. And then this is the thinner battery under, down here. Yeah. And they've got, you can actually see the actual like battery stack inside. Mm-hmm. Personally, I, I like I know that companies' costs are not just the components of the device. Like they have to have insurance and R and D, and but f I don't think this is near like oh, this is like this is like this $10 is like five dollars, yeah, five to ten, five or ten dollars, and then adding a charging circuitry is just like another couple dollars on top of that. So, so out of some of the devices we've taken apart, I don't feel like this one's a very good value for the actual parts inside, mm -hmm. but the value. Ironically enough, it's not the parts inside. Yeah. The value the is whole, the, the whole lack whole of motion sickness. Yeah. The value is like the quality of life that it gives you and, and the price is based on that. It's not based on the components inside, which is an interesting yeah. concept to me. Because people, <laughs> including myself, like really don't want to be motion sick. Yeah. It's the, the ever ongoing argument between marketing people and engineering people. And why would you sell it for $30 when you can get 60? Well, I've watched Shark Tank. I know how. <laughs> shark. Call, up, call up Mark Cuban. <laughs> Kevin O'Leary says, $30, you should be charging 60 Well, if anyone wants to make an open source version of this, I'm sure you could do it for cheaper. I wish that I liked it more, because then I would want to, I right? I wish I liked it more. But I don't yeah. like it yeah, more than true. Dramamine, even though the uh -huh. Dramamine tastes like that awful strawberry artificial flavor. Uh, and that's temporary, and then the, the effects this, are... This probably tastes way better. Mmm. Lead. Well, thanks, David, for another yeah. great teardown. Thanks, Becky. Great, great work. See you next time. See you next time on Teardown. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on your favorite social media platform. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This video was made with support from my sponsors and generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships.